Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about projectile motion, which is actually just a really fun and interesting concept, and it's something that we can apply to almost everything in our everyday life. So let's go through these slides real fast. There's a lot of information. Most of the notes are already in your packet, but please follow along with the video and add things as needed. So the most classic example of projectile motion is like throwing something. So in this case, when we throw a basketball through the air, the path that it takes is super similar to something you've probably seen in math class because it's just a parabola. It's just got that little loop in it and it's heading right back down to where it started. So because we have constant acceleration due to gravity, we can kind of correlate what we've seen in math to what we're actually doing in class. So you've probably seen y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That's just your classic parabola. Each piece tells you something different about the equation. And this is the version that we use in physics. So our kinematics equation is d, the displaced chain. <sighs> <laughs> your displacement, so the difference between where you start and where you finish, equals your initial velocity times the change in time, plus one half your acceleration times your change in time squared. Now we can actually rearrange this, and just trust me, the whole magic of math. Um, by breaking down our displacement, we can rearrange it into exactly what our math equations have taught us. So we have a second tier equation where we are raising our x to the second power, second degree, not second tier. Anyway, so the final position is just going to be a second degree function of time for an object going under a constant acceleration. And thankfully on Earth, we have a constant acceleration because gravity is always bringing us down. So in physics, we actually prefer to use overall displacement instead of like just initial and final position but we can just use that equation to see how it's going to relate to math. Um, we will still use just our version of the kinematics equation um, where displacement is still put together. We know how things are going to free fall. So cat knocking something off of a desk, um, somebody falling out of a plane, all those things. We just drop it and gravity pulls it down. So now all that we're doing when we're throwing something through the air, we already know how it's falling. We just have to know how far it's going horizontally. And obviously it's not going to fall straight down. There's an arc to it, which is why it's a parabola. But we can still calculate all the different parts that we need. And the shape of that curve is actually going to change depending on the initial velocity of the projectile. So like if you throw a football or I had to make sure I got this right, but um, Oh, shoot. Jason Myers, was that his name, from the Seahawks uh, last night? Jason Myers from the Seahawks um, on Sunday night. Monday. What day is today? Today's Monday. Sunday night kicked a 61-yard field goal, and it was really far. It also barely made it. <laughs> but we can see here how, depending on our initial speed and our angle, he could have made it or he could have completely missed it. So there's actually a ton of math and ideas that can go into understanding those concepts and how footballs could fly, how you catch a fly ball in baseball, all those sorts of things. And all that's happening here is the change is pretty much going to be our um, coefficients. So if you were to drop an object and launch an identical object horizontally from the same height, they're actually going to have really similar motions. So one of the things my professor um, did, and I was going to try to do it for you guys, but here we are, um, is you can actually string up. <laughs> okay, it sounds really bad. Um, but he strung up Barney from the ceiling, like a stuffed Barney toy, and then took a Nerf gun and shot the Nerf gun at Barney as Barney was falling. And what you'll see is it actually hits Barney. And that's just through the magic of math. If we have them set up at the same height to start with, gravity is still going to pull them down at the same rate. And to kind of show you what I mean, I'm actually going to play um, a clip from Mythbusters real fast for you, where they do the thought experiment, but with bullets. What you got there? This is a good one. Picture two bullets, each exactly the same distance from the ground, each 
released at the exact same second, except one bullet is dropped to the ground, the other is fired from a gun. The classic physics thought experiment states that both bullets will hit the ground at the same time. Based on what theory? Based on the theory that the bullet that's fired from the gun has no wings on it, no lift. Thus, gravity has the same effect on it as it does on the drop bullet, and thus, they hit the ground simultaneously. Adam lays down a runway of white paper so the high-speed camera will clearly see and measure both bullets at the same time, in the same place, and in the same shot. All we need now in the drop zone is Jamie's drop rig so the boys can take a shot at physics history. All right, you ready to do this for real? I think we'll hit it on the first shot. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you will never make predictions. That's awesome. Bullet drop versus fire. In three, two, one. But from 360 feet away, the boys can't see exactly where the fired bullet landed. Let's go see where it hit. So Adam takes a one-wheeled ride down the room to check out the drop zone. <laughs> wow. And the results are simply ripping. Can't get much closer than that. Oh, I can't wait to see the high speed. Adam analyzes the high speed and crunches the numbers. 3677 minus 3915 equals 238 divided by 6. <laughs> Dude, the difference is 39.6 milliseconds. Which means it's less than the human eye can make out. So after days of brain-teasing tests, the Mythbusters can claim a world first for themselves. And a victory for physics. Let me put 39.6 milliseconds into some perspective for you. When you go to the movies and watch a projected celluloid film on the screen, you know that that film's made up of individual images, right? What you might not have known is that it takes 24 of those per second to make up the film that you're watching. So each one is on screen for exactly 1 24th of a second, but you don't notice that because it's faster than your eye can register. Well, that 1 24th of a second is actually longer than 39.6 milliseconds. That's how close those two bullets were. So ideally, we would have done some sort of lab kind of similar to this, um, where we are proving that they are going to fall at the same time, no matter how fast or how hard you throw them. But Mythbusters did it for us, so we're just going to take that. So when we are doing a parabolic curve, every ball is going to fall the same vertical distance in equal time periods. So we have like these two balls, we have the blue one has been like tossed out a little bit and the orange one's been just dropped. So no matter what we do, the blue ball and the orange ball line up as they fall down, even though the blue ball is also moving horizontally. And that's just because gravity has the exact same effect on them as they're falling through the air. So from up to down, we're doing the exact same motion. However, we are moving also sideways. So as you can see, the horizontal motion, those look pretty equal. So in every like span of time, we're actually moving the same, like let's say two feet per second off to the side. We're dropping while we're doing it, but if we just look at the horizontal part, we're moving over at the exact same displacement each time. And that's because we're not speeding up or slowing down. There's nothing that's changing what we're doing. We had that initial velocity and that initial velocity is giving us some sort of sideways movement, but it's not doing anything up and down. That's just gravity. So the two objects have the same vertical position, so up and down throughout the motion. And then when we're moving off to the side as well, we are moving down with that speed of gravity, but we're moving across at a constant speed in equal amounts of time. However, when we're going down, that acceleration is making our displacement a little bit different each time because we are accelerating from gravity. So now we have a lot of variables to talk about. Um, this next image is gonna look very complicated, but I'm gonna try to walk you through all the possible variables we can look at while we're looking at a projectile motion problem. And we're starting out super simply and we're just gonna be building on it. So this is gonna look 
really intense. However, we're going to build up to needing like not all, but most of these. All right. So over here at T0, this is where we're starting. So let's think of like, I don't know, a punter kicking a football. And they start off with an initial velocity and a launch angle. And those are usually actually going to be given to us, which makes it really easy. And because we know the initial velocity at that angle, we can figure out the two different velocities, one in the X and the one in the Y. Now, our one in the Y is going to be affected eventually by gravity as well, but our X is going to stay constant for each section that we move. So we already know one variable at each point in our entire curve. And we already know that our maximum height is going to happen halfway through. So we go up with the same speed that we come down. That's typically what we see in parabolas and math. So halfway through is where we're going to hit our peak. And at every single point here, we can look at what the angle is and we can solve for our velocity in the Y. And we already know the velocity in the X. So for all of these, we can actually find exactly what's going on. And then eventually we can solve for the total displacement if we need to. So let's just go through each of these and kind of talk through what they are. So our change in displacement in the X is the range. So that's how far we're going horizontally. And then our VX is our horizontal velocity and our delta T is the change in time. So that's gonna be the exact same thing that we've always seen. For vertical, we have our displacement in the Y. So that's how vertically displaced we are up and down. And it's the greatest at the maximum height. So at the very peak of our curve, and it's gonna be very zero at the bottom. So where we start and finish on a, a parabola should be at zero. Then we have our vector one, so or not, our velocity one, which is our initial velocity, and that's going the y direction, because our x direction, our velocity is gonna stay constant the entire time. And then we also have our final velocity in the y direction. Our acceleration in the vertical direction is always going to be at negative 9.8 meters per second squared because of that acceleration due to gravity on Earth. And then we have our delta T as our lapse time. So clearly it's really simpler to solve for our horizontal part than our vertical part. It's more fun to solve for the vertical part. So most of, like I said, most of the problems are going to give you an initial velocity and the angle that we launch a projectile at. So we're going to spend the first part of this section just breaking that initial velocity into horizontal and vertical components. And we have to do that because that's the only way to solve for the different pieces that we need to know. We can't know how far we go until we know how far initially our velocity is taking us. We can't know how high up we go until we know how high our uh, y velocity is taking us compared to our acceleration due to gravity. Do, 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 do. Horizontally, there's never an acceleration. We just have the initial velocity, at least not now. And we only have constant velocity equations for the horizontal variable because we don't have acceleration. So every time we would have an equation with acceleration, it would be zero. So we only need constant velocity equations. And vertically, we have a constant acceleration, so we can use any of the five equations of kinematics. So we're just going to be breaking these down into components like we did before, where you're going to draw your initial velocity vector, which is going to head up at an angle, and you're going to have a magnitude and then an angle to the ground. And you're going to be able to create a, I need a better way of doing this. You're going to be able to create a right triangle. There we go. So that you can figure out your X component and your Y component, because we were already given the hypotenuse. So we're going to go ahead and label them as our velocity in the X and velocity, initial velocity in the Y. 
and then just use trig to determine what's going on in each of the sections. So in this example, we have um, an initial velocity of 14.2 meters per second, and it was launched at a 54 degree angle above the horizon or an elevated angle. There's lots of different words we can use for that. So all we're gonna do to solve for the X is do our initial velocity times cosine of theta because this is just rearranged from our Sokotoa equation. So our cosine of that theta would equal the X over our hypotenuse. So then we just rearranged it and solved for the X there. And then do the same thing for Y and ta-da. You're all done. So that's all we're doing right now is breaking these into component parts. So let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day.